Hey everybody, Michelle here with iDaily Technology Consulting and today I'm going to show you how to link a user-defined field to another user-defined field. Um, so in the last video that we created uh, titled Creating User-Defined Field in Stage 100, we created this account number field in our vendor maintenance screen. Today I'm going to show you how to have that account number automatically pull through into your invoice data entry. And then hopefully with the knowledge that you gain, you'll be able to link that through to invoice history and checks uh, if you need to. So let's get started. I'm going to go back into my custom office module and back into user defined field and table maintenance. And again, if you're not sure of what tables you need to be modifying, just reach out to your iBailey consultant. We'd be happy to point you in the right direction. So we've already created our account number field in AP Vendor Master. And now we want to have that pull through to AP Invoice Data Entry. And we want to have it pull up on the header of our invoice rather than attaching it to the individual lines. So I'm going to use AP Invoice Header. And then the same process as in the last video applies. Right click, choose Edit Fields, click the plus sign to add that. And then we're going to go ahead and give it the name. Now I like to stick with the same naming structure, but that is entirely up to you. You can give it a different name if you want to. Nobody sees this information on the back end. Now in the last one, we chose manual entry because our users were going to be manually entering in that account number into the vendor field. In this uh, instance, we actually want to pull the information that was already entered into vendor maintenance into invoice data entry. So no manual entry. I'm going to choose business object. And then from my data source, I want to choose the vendor number because that's where we saved the data, right? Okay. So then in the column, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, we see our account number. Okay. And then here you can see it's automatically pulling in the information um, that we chose in the last one. So the length of our user defined field, it's a string versus a number. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK. We're still going to get that big pop up screen so we can change the description or the caption that's going to pull up into invoice data entry. If I click on my data sources tab, I can see where it's pulling from vendor number and account. Going to go ahead and click OK and let that update. It's going to go through and update all of my tables that um, that need this. And it is also important to note that when you're creating a user defined field, it doesn't just get created for one company. It is going to be a system wide change, but it, you have the ability to um, add it to the panels in only those companies that you that you want. But you don't need to do this multiple times if you need that account number in multiple companies. OK, so now if I go into accounts payable and we're going to go into invoice data entry, we have to add that field. So again, right click, panel settings and customizer. I've already got one set up for all users and all companies, but I can set up a different one up here in the top if I want to. And then I just need to choose where I want that to show up. So I'm going to click add field over here in this panel. And looks like we're running a little bit short on room here, so I might move some stuff around. Um, but I am just going to go ahead and add this, I think, right here. And it's 30 long, even though we're not using all of that space. Select account number from my list. Again, any user defined fields that I have added to that table will show up. OK, so here's my account number and then the field. And you can see it's kind of kind of crazy. So I'm going to just move some stuff around a little bit. Best practices is always to stay inside these guidelines. If you get crazy and start moving stuff around, you could break your panel. And then you will have to reach out to an iBailey consultant for us to fix it. <laughs> OK, so it's not going to be the prettiest, but that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and save my panel and exit. Again, that secondary panel is going to pop up. And now when I come into invoice data entry, you can see the account number is down here. 
And it was a little deceiving as to where everything was. We don't have all of the features turned on. Um, what you see on the back end is not always what you see on the front end. I'm going to go ahead and look up that ACH vendor where we had the account number, and there it is. It automatically pulled the account number through. So now I can have that trickle through to AP history, to my checks, uh, to any forms, reports, anything like that. It is there and, and is available wherever. So that's how you link a user-defined field to another user-defined field inside of Sage 100. As always, if you have any questions, our team is here to help. Click the link below to get in touch.